Hello, welcome to the Excel Olympics YouTube channel. My name is Gaspar Kamish, I'm an Excel MVP from Slovenia, and today I want to talk about one of those dynamic array functions, rand array. So rand array, it's a very, very interesting function because basically you could just write it without providing it any argument. So let me show you. If I call up the rand array function, you're going to notice it says rows, columns, min, max, and integer, but all of those are in closed brackets, which means they're not necessary. And in reality, they really aren't necessary. So you could basically just go, yeah, that's it. Now, if you do that, you're actually writing this. You're actually writing the rand function, which we did once upon a time, right? Once upon a time, we had the rand function and we had the rand between function. Now, the difference between the two was that the rand between function would give you an integer, whereas the rand function would give you the decimal between zero and one. So it was always kind of, what do I need? And as a trainer, I was always making up these data sets. So I was always using a combination of the two and sometimes you need the positive and the negative. And you could do that with, with the RAND between. You couldn't do that with RAND. So you had to minus 0 0.5, but then they weren't really the same. So lots of you know issues there. But now you got the RAND array and the RAND array you saw that if I just close it down, it is actually the rand function. Now, if I leave the rows omitted, which means give me one row, leave the columns omitted, which means give me one column, and then over here I go 110, I still get an option, do you want the decimal or the integer? Now, if I say one over here, if it was omitted, it would be a decimal, but I'm gonna say one, this, is ran between 1 and 10. Right? So thus far, you know, nothing fancy here, but there is something happening in the background. So if you look at the function, do you see anything I changed? So if I type something in here, press enter, and that was a big coincidence, that one recalculates. Right? So the fact that this one is recalculating all the time means that this function is volatile. I should, you know, that should always ring a bell in your head saying, okay, I shouldn't use it too much. Uh, and yet it gives you the ability to do this because it's an array function. You can do, yeah, give me a random array. And whereas you saw that the min, max, and integer kind of fall into the rand and rand between uh, and rand yeah and rand between categories the rows and columns allows you to say give me 10 rows give me five columns where the minimum is 20 the maximum is 100 and they don't need to be integers and there it is right so this is a great way to get random numbers and what you could also do is just put all of those into separate cells and then you would kind of have a dynamic. So if I went like this, give me three rows, give me five columns, the minimum is one, the maximum is 10. And then over here, I just went this many rows, this many columns, this is the, and this is the maximum like this, right? I can now dynamically say, oh, but I need 15 rows and the lowest should be 100. Oh, that's not going to work. So the top should be 2000 and the lowest can now be 100. There you go. Right? And now give me eight columns. So it's, it's kind of interesting, right? What it does. And it's also extremely useful. Now, for me as a trainer, right out of the box, this is useful. 
although usually I'll be filling out columns, uh, but this is useful. But then you can take it to a whole new level because you can do this. You can say, well, okay, here I got a list. Now I want to sort that list randomly, right? How do you do that? Well, what you can say is you can say sort by, I want this array and I want it sorted by rand array of how many rows? I'm just going to write 11. I could do a count of this first column. So just give me 11 random numbers and then sort by them. And if I now show you how this recalculates every time, I now have a random, right? A totally random sort order of these people. Where you can take this a step further is if you said, okay, so I can obviously do this, but what if I had a slightly different situation? What if I had one of those? So today is Sunday. So if I do this, so the next Sunday would then be the 20th. And if I now took both of these put it down here, so let me just check if that is truly. Oh, yeah, well, that will do. Yeah, it is. And those are all Sunday. So let me just switch that. Oh, I thought it was an array. Sorry, like this. And let me just see if I got. Yeah, I got nothing but Sundays. Cool. So, you know, I got a bunch of Sundays. And I got my employees, right? And now I want to sort of figure out who's working where. And that's not, you know, as easy as it seems. Now, I could first go for the sequence function, just so I would get only the four uh, individuals in here. But I'll do it differently. I'll do it by saying, Okay, I need an index function. And what an index function does, it takes an array, right? So it takes an array, and then you need to tell it which row number, so which position you're looking for. And the position I'm looking for will be rand array, right? How many rows do I need? Well, it should be count of this, right? So as many dates as I have, or Sundays as I have, I only need the one column, so I'm gonna omit that. What should be the min? Well, the min should be one, what should be the max? So I'm going for this, right? Uh, and I'm just gonna go 11. Again, it could be count of the first column. And this, of course, should be an integer. So let's wrap it up, go like this, and there they are. Randomly assigned Sundays, although it has to be said, if I just had a list of the four names, that would be randomly assigned. Whereas this, so George actually has the biggest probability of being assigned a Sunday right now. And you can see that there's a lot of Georges here. Right? Whereas Ringo has the lowest possibility, he still got one, but it was, you know, one out of, I don't know how many, let's see how many, one out of 13. So that's, you know, a good score. Okay, so sorting, randomly sorting and randomly assigning, right? That, that's a cool, cool thing. And, you know, you could also use it in a sense for... Uh, just kind of picking one. So if you went, again, index from here, right? But then you just did the rand array for one row, one column, where you would want from 1 to 11, and it needs to be an integer. You're actually randomly picking people out of this 
bunch, right? Okay, and now for the last example for the random array function, let's do this. Let's say we really love our work, right? We, we, we never want to take a break. We don't even want to take vacations, nothing. But still, you know, since we have so much leave and we never use it, our boss demands that we turn in 10 days when we will take a leave. And, and we just, you know, we can't make up our minds. Yeah, I don't know when I want to take a leave. So I know I need 10 dates, random 10 dates. I, I know that those need to be between today and the end of year, okay? But here's a the trick. They also need to be work days, right? I can't submit 10 Sundays and say those are I'm taking off because obviously. So let's start with today. Let's start with December 31st, 2022. So that's my limits. And then over here, I'm going to have, well, I'm just going to do the one and I'm going to, provided with 10 numbers. So I'm going to do equals workday function. Now I could even go for the international version where I could say, I never want to miss Wednesdays because Wednesdays, you know, that's when we have that special lunch or something. Check out the video for the international versions of network days and work days, and you can see how that would work. And that would be brilliant, but let's just, you know, leave it in the normal realm and say, what's the start date? Well, the start date should be a random array, right? And I need 10 dates. I only need one column of those numbers, those dates. The min should be this, and the max should be this. And then this should be an integer. So I'm going to give it, if I omit it, it would be a decimal. So I need to provide it. I'm just going to give it a one. So now it is an integer, but now what do I get? Well, I get random numbers between this and this. In this scenario, I would still get Saturdays and Sundays, but I could now go, oh, and then give me the next working day behind that, right? So the only problem that this has is I could somehow, this date would be selected and I could fall into the next year. So this would probably need a minus one, right? Um, but this one doesn't bother me even if it's today because the plus one day is always gonna at least plus one on that. So this is okay. And let's see where this takes us. There it is. So obviously something wrong with the, so these are the dates. Oh, and let's, let's actually format them like this. Just so we see that we got 10 days all occurring on weekdays. And now we know when we're going to take our breaks. And the cool thing is with the workday function, if I had the holidays over here, I could provide those to the workday function and it would omit those too. So I really get only the working days, right? I could also pick this for random picking of, I don't know, drug tests or something, or random picking of, you know, the next, uh, let's say team, team buildings or something, right? And once I have this, I could just say sort because now I would want them sorted, right? So I can kind of, know which is the first date coming and so on. And I hope that you notice here that random array, you know, it can give you really an array of not just integers or decimals, but kind of the both where some once upon a time you had to do rand between plus rand or something like that. Then it can do sorting, it can do selecting, and it can do random selecting, which is always good. And then if you combine it, and I sort of combined it here also with other array functions, dynamic array functions like sort by or over here where I did sort and I combined it with a workday function, which is not an array function, but still you can, right? And doing that, you can really, really do 
some amazing, amazing stuff here. Okay, so that's a wrap on the RAND array function. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.